Be right if the Spirit of the Lord wasn't here. Hey, hey. Amen. We'd just be wasting our time. We come here to do more than just bump our gums. Right. Can someone say amen? Hey. Amen. We come here to talk to God. We come here to have some serious business take place. Amen. Thank you, Brother Luther Sanchez, for being here with us tonight. Hey. Amen. going to preach with the preacher? Yes. How many people are going to move with God? Yes. Amen. I'm going to preach with the preacher and I'm going to move with God. I don't want you all to leave yet. Because you know sometimes the, the person getting up here introducing the uh, the preacher, you know, we're up here and then I get to talking too much or whoever it is and we go way back down here. So, uh, you know, we like that inspiration stuff. Yeah. Amen. 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 We all have that music to pump us up. And that's all right. That's right. Amen. When it's anointed and of God, so I want y'all to sing it again. Amen. And then I'll just we'll just do like a baton or rage. We'll just hand it off uh, uh, and, and let it go. Somebody say amen. 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 God's good. Amen. amen. We serve a great God. Sing that song again, Brother Luther Sanchez. You come up here. You take your liberty. Uh, church, young people, mamas, daddies, grandmas, and grandpas. Uh, you get behind the man of God, and when God moves, you move with God. If I say, I will. place and I hope that you all understand that you have a man of God and a, and a wife that truly love you and he, they have a desire to see something happen in your life and the lives of your young people and I want to honor your pastor today and his wife for who they are. Amen. I want to also take time to honor some of the other pastors that are here. I see some youth pastors and pastors in different areas, uh, places, but all back there. So good to see all of you. I don't want to begin to name names. I will forget somebody, but I thank you. Uh, young people, if you have a youth leader that brought you here and his wife, why don't you clap your hands and thank God for your youth leader. so good. She's so beautiful. And uh, I, I know I got lucky with that one. I don't know how that happened. I honor her for being with me tonight. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, I'm kind of biding time because uh, I came here 
with a message in mind. Uh, something that I thought that uh, uh, that I thought was what I needed to speak to, and it's changed. It has changed. Uh, and so I would want to ask everyone, if you would just for a moment, close your eyes, and I want you to speak to the Lord. Open up your mouth and speak to Him for just a moment and ask Him, God, come into this place and speak to us. Come on, lift your voice, everyone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. If you have your Bible. Or if you have a Bible app, please open it to Romans, the first chapter, verse number 16. Maybe the Lord will have me preach what I was going to preach another night. I'm excited about this first night of revival. I feel like God's going to do something in this place. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 and it says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek I want to I want to speak to you on this subject tonight. My gospel. All right. All right. My gospel. Yes, it is. Lord, I bless you. I honor you tonight. I'm asking you, Jesus, to give me clarity of thought and speech. Let your anointing surround about us, O oh God. Lord, move in this place like never before. And I'm asking you, Jesus, to give me strength in my voice, O oh Lord God. Lord God, let me say what you want me to say in this place. Change a heart and a mind, oh God. Give somebody understanding. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I bless you and I honor you today. In Jesus' holy name. And everyone say amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. My desire is to give somebody some understanding. Understanding. Ever look at that word, understanding? Uh-huh understanding something that stands under you right. or that you can stand on mm -hmm. All right. this is my gospel <clears throat> all my life I've been raised in the church All right. the truth of God's word is what I know this is what I've been trained to do this is what my parents instilled in me uh, from a little child, they tried their best to put the Word of God in me. That, let me stop here and say that, that I'm grateful that I had parents that trained me in the ways of God. I, I'm grateful that I had parents that prayed for me and that stayed up at night time and watched for my soul. Oh yes. It's very important, young people, that if you have parents or, or someone that takes care of you or, or maybe even a friend that, that decides to, to want to bring you to the house of God, you should be thankful for that person in your life. Right. Let me tell you something. When, when the Lord told Moses about the angel, the death angel that was coming by, I don't believe that what happened was the the Lord got got Moses together and said, "Okay, the death angels coming by. Tell my people." And then Moses, you know, he just happens to grab you know all the, these people and, and and he said, "Okay, listen, the death angels coming by. You need to put blood, apply it to your doorposts, and keep the kids inside because the only ones that are going to be saved." are the ones that are in the place where the blood is applied. Right. Right. I said, aren't you thankful that you're in a place where the blood is applied? I believe I'm in an apostolic church. 
have a pastor that believes in the blood of Jesus. Hey, listen, this world wants to be a secret friendly, and they don't want to talk about the blood. But I love this bloody gospel because it's my gospel. moms and dads got together and grabbed little Johnny and little Susie and said, listen, the death angel's coming by. You need to stay in the house. See you in the morning. Uh-huh. I don't believe that's what happened. See, I think what happened was because you have to look at the time frame and the area and the place where they were. They were slaves. So a lot of them didn't have like a door like that, like this metal door that had, you know, locks and bolts. You know, at our house, we have like 17 locks. Uh-huh. And, and then the little twister, and then and then the chain, like the chain is gonna make the difference. <laughs> That's what's gonna you know. That, that they didn't have that. See, a lot of them only had a piece of animal skin that covered the doorway. Right, right. So I believe that what happened was there were some moms and dads that said, you know what, tonight is gonna be a little bit different. I'm going to make my bed right here in front of the doorway. Just in case little Johnny or little Susie decide to get up and they want to get out the house, they're going to have to go over me. Uh All right. right. What I'm saying to you young people is you better thank God for 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 a mom and a dad or a person that decides to bring you to the house of God. And that, listen, you need to thank God, especially church, for a man of God and a woman of God that has decided to stand in the doorway right in front of death door and said, you ain't going to get through here. If you do, it'll be over my dead body. He loves you enough to stay. He wants you to stay in the church where the blood is applied. You know, sometimes we get upset, young people that are moms and dads tell us, no, you can't spend the night at that, that unsaved person's house. Uh-huh. All right, talk about you it. can't go there. Yeah. You can't do this. You can't do that. Listen, we get upset so many times, but I want you to change your mindset and realize that they are ensuring that you are in a place where the blood is applied and that you don't have to worry about drugs and alcohol and all these other things. Be thankful. Yes. 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 I, I was very thankful in all my life. My parents did everything they could to make sure that I knew what this truth was. They, they put it inside of me. They tried their best. Listen, sometimes sometimes they, they, they brought me to the house of God and I didn't even want to come. All right. Some of y'all didn't want to be here tonight. All right. Hopefully not. <laughs> there were times that my parents said, no, you're going in youth service. Right. You go on a youth camp. Right. You go into that youth rally and you go into right. that youth event and you're going to be in the house of God. I don't care if you fall asleep under the pew because my parents knew that if I stayed in the church, that one day something would happen and that thing happened. One day God got a hold of me and I fell in love with the truth. I fell in love with the word of God. Listen, I don't I don't know what you're going through right now, young person.
I don't have a testimony like that. Uh-huh. See, I was raised in the church. All right. Uh-huh. I, I don't have a testimony. I beg to differ with you, young person. If you've been raised in an apostolic church, on an apostolic pew, you have the greatest testimony. Uh-huh. Don't you let anybody ever tell you that you don't have a testimony. God kept you from drugs. God kept you from alcohol. You didn't have to worry about getting some kind of disease from living some kind of way of lifestyle. You got a right to praise the name of Jesus just like our elders. Hallelujah. I love this gospel. Amen. Listen. Listen. I, I'm 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 a techie person. Alright. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I, I like technology. I do. Uh, I remember when cell phones were just coming out. Yeah, this way beyond your time. <laughs> I'm really starting to tell my age now. With cell phones, we used to have these little things that we used to put on our hip. <laughs> it was called a pager. You don't even know what that is, do you? We used to have pagers. And, 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 and listen, I, I just like technology. I was one of the first young persons in the church that had a pager. Nobody even called me. But just, <laughs> here's my number. Beat, beat me. <laughs> beat me. And then cell phones came out. And I went and got me one of them big old cell phones. Looked like this bottle. <laughs> With the bag. (laughs) I like technology. My point is that I am all for using technology. I like my iPad. I I like my iPhone. God forbid if you have an Android. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm all for using technology and I'm all for using a Bible app. But let me tell you this. Don't you ever get away from the Word of God. Don't you ever about $120 back in 19... <laughs> Y'all they were expensive. They still expensive now, right? Yeah. And, and listen, I asked my parents, I said, Mom, uh, I, I want for a pair of, uh, to go, when I go to school, and listen, my parents were, were kind enough not to tell me that we were broke, we was poor. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. <laughs> I figured... That I was okay. So, you know, I want the $120 pair of shoes. No. Mom said no. I, I'm not going to just give you that $120 pair of shoes. She said, you're going to work for them. And so that whole summer, I remember working in yards, raking up leaves. I mean, I did some odd jobs. I did some weird stuff so that I could get the money. For these shoes. Uh-huh. I babysat. Uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't know no kids. I did everything I could because I wanted these pair of shoes. And you know what happened? I got the money. Uh-huh. And I bought my shoes. I Listen, when I put things on my feet, I thought I could play. I could dunk. I'm five, seven. I can't hardly reach. Uh, but you know, in my mind, I had the Jordans. I got so many compliments on my Jordans. And you know what? I wore those things for three years. (laughs) My toes were cranked up in them things. (laughs) I was walking like this. Because I wanted... Listen, you know why I wore those shoes for so long? It was because I invested something in them. Amen. I I had a part... They weren't just given to me. I, I had to work 
for that. I had an investment in it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this is because I believe it's high time, young people, that we start taking ownership of this gospel. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 23 and 23 says, buy the truth and sell it not. I think it's about high time that we start investing something of our own in this gospel. Amen. All right. Too many times we say, you know, this is what my parents, you know, believe, so I'm in the church, so I'll follow suit. Right. This is what my church believes. This is what my pastor teaches. Mm -hmm. Do you know in, in Romans chapter 1 what we read? Did you notice that he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. But I want you to, to notice something. It was something, when I saw you, y'all are way smarter than me, so you probably found this out before I did. But if, if, if you did, just act like you're excited. <laughs> A chapter later, just one chapter later, in Romans chapter 2 and verse 16, Paul changes his phraseology and he says, my gospel. He calls it my gospel. And I believe it's because he realized this message of truth is something that I need to take ownership. It has to be in our hearts. It has to listen. I'm sick and tired of our young people going off to college and coming back every kind of way. It's because you didn't fall in love with God's word. You didn't get it in your heart. And it's because it's just been handed to you. But you need to start taking some ownership. ridicule and they listen people didn't want to talk to them they said y'all are crazy they said you're in a cult but you and I sit in this place and we're just very comfortably worshiping the name of Jesus and we think that everything's just fine because it's been given to us but I think it's about high time that we quit saying that this is just something that I'm part of that I'm an org in the organization that this is something my parents believe that this is something that, that my pastor preaches I believe it's high time and we say, this is my gospel. It belongs to me. And some people are going to ask you, why don't you dress the same? Why don't you look like I do? Why don't you cut your hair like I do? Why don't you dress the way I do? Why don't you look just like me? Listen, I believe that we ought to quit backing up and hiding and trying to just fade in the background. We need to stand up and tell this world, I'm apostolic and it's my gospel. my church believes. This is just my religion. This is just how I am. Listen, you need a beat. You need to get a revelation of who you are. Right. Yes. You need to get a revelation of who. Listen, if this world wants to ask you, why don't you look like me? Why don't you dress like me? Why don't you go where I go? Listen, I am not an advocate, nor do I condone any prideful, haughty, consenting response. But if this world wants to know who we are, I believe it's high time that we tell this world just who we are. Yeah. Yeah. We're the people of God. We belong to Him. We are blessed. We've been given the revelation of Jesus' name. We've been, we've been baptized in Jesus' name. By blood by Jesus. I'm an apostolic. I believe in one God. There's only one. Two and not three. There's one, and his name is Jesus. 
know what the Bible says? No, wait, what? No, Brother Luther. We really got to respond like that? Really? You know how the Bible put it? He said, you're a holy generation. Uh -huh. yes. 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 A, a royal priesthood. Yes. Yes. A, a holy nation. Oh. A peculiar people. Yes. That means you don't fit in. Uh -huh. yes. You are chosen for God. Yes. Yes. Then you should show forth the praises of him that has brought you out of darkness into this moment. church and the worship leader has to bust their, their throat out trying to get you to move when you were created to praise him. Don't you get ashamed? You ought to be proud when you walk down your school, your hallway school. You ought to be proud when you go to work. Come on. Uh -huh. I, I'm so sick and tired of seeing apostolic people go around thinking that you're just some outcast, some reject, a doormat, good for nothing to be trampled on and walked all over. I'm in, to, I'm in this place to tell you the devil is a lie. Yeah. I said the devil is a lie. You are special. God handpicked you out of all the millions of people in this world. He handpicked you because he wanted your voice. The devil is trying so hard to keep us ignorant of who we are. Because if you don't know who you are, you don't know how to act. You need a revelation of who you are. You are walking around like a vagabond and you don't even realize that you got royalty running through your blood. You are chosen by God. That ought to mean something to you. That's right. I don't know about you in this place, but I'm proud to be an apostolic. I'm proud to be a one God. Tongue tucking, holy holy, born again, but evil. It's the liberating power of Jesus' name. I've been lost in the blood, sanctified by God. That's right. I believe in holiness. You should do the same. not just some religion. Yeah. This is yeah. my gospel. Yeah. 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 When are we going to get to the point where we realize I got to take some ownership of this. I got to, I got to buy into this. Right. You need to get a revelation of who you are. All right. Amen. Amen. Right. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not special. Don't, any, don't ever let anybody tell you that you're making a big deal about this. All right. Amen. You know, this holiness that y'all talk about all the time, the way you walk and the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you, places you go, it's unnecessary. All right. It's too much. You don't really have to do all that. All right. Really? Uh -huh. Listen. I believe it's about time that we stand up and we tell this world in a loving, kind way. Listen, I, listen I'm listen. i so thankful, elders, for what you've done with the gospel thus far. But I want you to know that you ain't got nothing to be worried about. Because as long as I got breath in my body and a voice, I'm going to preach this truth. I'm going to preach one God, one Lord, one thing, and one baptism. I, I'm, 
I'm just my concern and the reason why I'm bringing this to you tonight is because I want some young person to join me in my quest to make sure that these elders can relax and rest peacefully knowing that they have left a mark on our lives and they have passed on something that means something. Oh, you're just setting off alarms? You're just doing all that for, for no reason? Listen, they will try to tell you that, that we are all worshiping the same God. Mm -hmm. all right. You may call him Buddha. Uh, no. They may call him Muhammad. Uh, they may call him the great light source. <laughs> it's, it's all the same God. I'm about to hurt your feelings. Oprah done said there's many different ways to God. Jesus is just one of them. <laughs> Oprah. Oprah. Yes. Lord help help you. you love Oprah. Her mama couldn't even get her name right. It was supposed to be Orpha. <laughs> I don't like her because she stands against something and she has defiantly stood up against yeah. men of God and said that there are different ways and that you are making up too much of a deal of what you do and what you what you believe that there's many ways to God. Listen, there is not many ways to God. We are different. We don't fit in. And you should stop trying to. God gave you the revelation of who he is. And his name is Jesus. And I said his name is Jesus. There's only one God. And his name is Jesus. We don't fit in. We baptize in the name of Jesus. about this pastor but let me be clear when I tell you we don't believe in baptizing in three different titles uh -huh. Come on. it's just a title we baptize in the name of above Jesus. every name yeah. and the name is Jesus you want to know why because when you apply Jesus you apply the blood right. and you're only going to be safe in the place where the blood is applied Thank God for an apostolic church. Amen. 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 My God. It's mine. Yeah. And I don't mind telling somebody. It's mine. It belongs to me. This is what I believe. If if my parents quit quit going to church, will you still look for God? Do you believe this strong enough that if these doors were boarded up by the government and said you can't worship here anymore because we don't believe what you're preaching, will you still live for God? All right. All right. Amen. All right. Yes. Mm. I believe it's coming. Okay. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do you have enough of Jesus in you to understand that even by myself, I can get down on my knees and I can bless his name. I will bless the name of Jesus. I will bless you, Lord, at all times. Your praise will continue to be in my mouth. Do you have enough of God in you to, to continue on? All right. I don't know why I went this way. But somebody need to know the truth in here. Yeah. You need to understand that the truth of God's word is the only thing that's going to bring peace to your mind. It's going to bring salvation. It's the only thing that's going to put your marriage together. It's the only thing that's going to bring your finances together. It's the truth. And it's my gospel. You know what else they're going to try to tell you? I'm, I'm about to talk about it, baby. I'm going to have to do it. They're going to try to tell you that when you come to church, you ought to sit on that pew 
and and just be sovereign. That's <laughs> right. Sovereign. Amen. Yes. God is a sovereign God. I believe that. He is so. And he is holy. But do you understand that when you come in his presence and you keep quiet, what you literally do is defy him? Right. Because in, a, in the presence of a holy God, Woo. the angels that don't even know sin, when they look at him and they get a new glimpse of his glory, yes. they have to cry out, Holy! He's holy! He's holy! He's holy! It's my gospel! I believe in exuberant praise. I believe when you get in this place, don't you make somebody come and cry you? You worship God. they have literally I, I had I wish I could have put the picture up here because I have the article that came out in January of this last year and the article literally said that with a few gray hairs of an apostolic movement when they pass on so will this exuberant praise let me let me let me make that real plain to you they're saying young people that when, when our elders pass on and they die, that praise is going to die with them. Oh my God. No. <coughs> you know, praise almost died once. Mm. The devil tried to hang it. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. Judah, uh -huh. Judah means praise. Right. Watch this. Judas means multiple praises. It's the plural version. All right. Amen. And the devil tried to get multiple praises. That means praise from a many people. Yeah. And he tried to hang it. And that's what he's going to try to do with this young generation. Yeah. He's going to want you to put a noose around your praise Woo! and just let it hang yeah. there until you die. Yeah. I don't know about you in this place, but I know if these young people they stand up with me and say, Forbid will show up to a Jay Z and Beyonce concert, and the first thing they'll tell you is put your hands up uh -huh. and let me hear you. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. That's because the devil wants your praise too. Right. Right. Yeah. Why, when you go into that concert, they can say, "Let me hear you," and you slap, lose your mind. That's right. yeah. Come on. Jay Z ain't done nothing for me. I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm talking about the righteous God, the heavenly God. Let me put it to you this way: He's wonderful. He's consular. He's the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And I'm gonna. 
an invisible God. John 1 and 14 tells me that he is God manifested in the flesh. Isaiah 9 and 6. Wonderful. Yes. Counselor. The Holy God. The everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. John 1 and 14. The Word was made flesh. This is my gospel. I'm not sure why God wanted me to go this direction but I want you to know he wants somebody to fall back in love with him I'm in an apostolic church that means we should be exuberant and exciting but I feel like and I, I, I feel this so strong I feel like God is telling somebody that you lost your first love. Oh, God. The Calvary don't mean what it used to do you. Oh, God. What he did for you doesn't mean anything anymore. Oh, God. You can care less. It's nothing more than a picture or a movie. Yes. Some distant story that you hear. Oh, God. And he fell in love with you. That's right. <laughs> I got a chance to look at a, at a YouTube video and it broke my heart. There were people in the, in the Orient, it was in, I believe, in a, a distant place in Thailand. And they had never, they had been being preached to and preached to by apostolics. They had been preached to and preached to. And finally the day came where the box came and they opened up the box and it was a box of Bibles do you realize that they wouldn't even touch it until they went and washed their hands in, in fear that they would they would defy the word of God the video shows pictures of these people holding it and kissing it Because it's what brought them salvation. They were so honored to be able to hold one of these. And some of you can't even tell me where yours is. It's sitting in the back of your car. In the floorboard. Maybe on a coffee table. Ain't, ain't been open since Sunday. Where, where is our passion? For God. Close your eyes and I want you to imagine with me. See, 
seeing in your mind how much love he had for you that he literally allowed a whip that was designed to rip flesh he let it lash against his body and pull the flesh from it and with each lash he was saying this is for her uh, this is for him this is for that one that will be in that service one day oh but that wasn't enough because then he said wait I'm going to let them drag me to a cross and drive stakes into my hands and my feet as I hang here and with each breath gasping I'm going to be thinking of them he did that with no promise that you would love him back because he fell in love with you where is our passion for God God when do we get to a place where we will take some ownership and quit saying this is just I hate it's just it's just the church when are we going to say this is my church this is what I believe this is my gospel I wonder I'm going to open this altar I wonder if there's some people in here, some young people, that will make a new commitment to not treat this the way we've made it. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I've made this, but it's all about you. It's all about you. I wonder if you make a new commitment. Make a new commitment tonight. God, I want to live for you. I want to do right. I want to live for you. Yeah. Because I love you.